After discussing ABO blood groups in the previous video, now it's time to talk about the RH blood types. RH stands for rhesus antigen or rhesus factor. It's an antigen on the surface of the red blood cell, like the ABO system, but a completely different system. That's how we know if you are positive or negative. For example, are you blood group A positive or A negative? Positive or negative? That's the RH system. We have repeated this slide for over a million times. Immune hemolytic anemia has three subtypes. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia, the most common, warm or cold. Drug-induced hemolytic anemia, alloimmune hemolytic anemia, which is our topic now. Alloimmune hemolytic anemia is further subdivided into hemolytic disease of the newborn and alloimmune hemolytic transfusion reaction. Here we have RH disease, ABO incompatibility. To understand RH disease, let's understand the RH. Cool. There are hundreds of antigens on the red blood cell surface. Antigens are molecules that are capable of inducing immune response i.e. capable of producing antibodies against these antigens. This is your glorious red blood cell. It has ABO antigens, which are two antigens, A antigen or B antigen. There is no such thing as the O antigen. RH system has six different antigens. So after talking about ABO system, we had A antigen and B antigen. If we will talk about another system, we'll start with, after B, we have C, D, and E. Kind of makes sense. But in our H system, we have C capital and C small. Same with D and E. You have uppercase D, lowercase D, large E, small E. But you will never have the six. You will only have one of each of the three pairs. So if you have the capital C, you will never have the small c at the same time. Not gonna happen. Same with D or E. You have one of each of the three pairs. This is one pair, second pair, third pair. Which one of these is the most common? D. So there is a mnemonic, D is drooling, it's all over the place. Ooh, yucky. So if you have the D antigen, you are an RH positive person. If you do not have the D antigen, you're called RH negative. Okay, prevalence depends on many factors, different populations, you can read this if you wish. Now, inheritance. If your daddy is RH negative and your mommy is RH negative, 100% you will be RH negative. Okay? There is no way around it. But if one of your parents is RH positive and the other is RH negative, doesn't matter which is which, oh, you're a confused baby. You can be RH negative or RH positive. It depends. Okay? But if your mother is RH negative and your father is RH positive and you came to be RH positive, we have a problem on our hand called hemolytic disease of the newborn. It doesn't happen with the first baby. It happens with the second pregnancy. That's why mommy is RH negative and you are RH positive. Then we need mommy to pay attention during the prenatal visit with her obstetric gynecologist because we have to give her something to prevent the second baby from getting hemolysis. There is a key difference between the ABO system and the RH system. ABO system can produce spontaneous agglutinin without exposure to foreign blood. Any baby is born without any agglutinin, but just spontaneously, few months after birth, the baby will spontaneously form antibodies. 
So we do not require previous exposure to blood. Okay. On the other hand, the RH system, there is no such thing as spontaneous agglutinin. For these antibodies to form, you have to be previously exposed to blood that was RH positive and you were RH negative, so you are now sensitized. If this happens again, the second response will be faster and stronger. I hope this is clear. So here is a patient that's RH negative and we are giving him or her RH positive blood for the first time. First exposure, no immediate reaction. The anti-RH antibodies will gradually form. It takes time, around three weeks. If blood is still there from this transfusion, mild hemolysis may occur since this blood will be few most of it will be consumed and destroyed so the hemolysis will be pretty mild if any on second exposure to rh positive blood now you have anti-rh antibodies in your blood from the first exposure the reaction will be immediate and severe faster and stronger you'll have a bigger hemolysis Hemolysis occurs by tissue macrophages, such as splenic macrophages, so it's an extravascular hemolysis. You can have jaundice, increased unconjugated bilirubin, you can have high LDH, low haptoglobin, all of the signs of hemolysis and jaundice. This doesn't have to be blood transfusion. It could be labor during pregnancy. It can be abortion, whether elective or spontaneous. It can be a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, whatever. That's it for today. In the next video, we'll discuss hemolytic disease of the newborn. Please don't forget to subscribe. Also like me on Facebook. I'm posting a lot of stuff there. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Stay happy. Study hard.